Welcome to St. Bartholomew the Apostle Church. We are gathered together today to celebrate the sacred liturgy for the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand and share a greeting with one another. Our presider is Father John, assisted by Deacon Matt. Our entrance hymn is Table of Plenty. Good evening. We begin with the sign of our victory, the power of the cross, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you come to us in word, in sacrament, and in one another. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you sustain us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you satisfy the hunger of every human heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that with you as our ruler and our guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, twenty barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, Give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected, How can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, Give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat, and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over, as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace one body and one spirit, as you were called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain, and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, Where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him, because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Two hundred days' wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, Have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about five thousand in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had their fill, he said to his disciples, Gather the fragments left over, so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled twelve wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, This is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Our God abundantly provides for all our needs. Two weeks ago, I visited a very close friend of mine, Father Morris Montoya. He is a newly ordained priest for the Archdiocese and was assigned to Blessed Sacrament Parish in Elizabeth. And naturally, when I arrived to the parish, Father Morris wanted to give me a tour of the church building. He began by explaining some of the architecture, beautiful stained glass, and artwork within the church. As we approached the sanctuary, there were two transepts, one on, on the left and the other on the right. He asked me, what depictions of art do you see on either side? At the end of the left transept, there was the image of the wedding at Cana. At the end of the right transept, there was the image of the feeding of the 5,000, which we heard in our gospel passage this evening. Through each of these images, the wedding at Cana, where Jesus provides abundant wine, and the feeding of the 5,000, where Jesus provides abundant bread, we get a glimpse of what God intended to do by sending Jesus, his only begotten Son, into the world. What God intended to do back then, and what he intends to do in each of our lives today. Our responsorial psalm captures well the desire and action of God for each of us. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. Today's readings help us to realize just this, that Jesus Christ 
comes to each one of us this day in his divine generosity to abundantly provide for all of our needs. In our first reading from the second book of Kings, we hear about the prophet Elisha and the last of his miracles in chapter 4. Elisha performed impressive miracles such as raising a local woman's son from the dead. But interestingly, Elisha's miracles culminate, as we just heard, in the multiplication of loaves. Facing the need of feeding 100 people, Elisha had a perspective of divine abundance, while his servant in the reading had a perspective of insufficiency. His servant, in response to Elisha's command to give the people 20 barley loaves to eat, replies, how can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha, in complete confidence, says, for thus says the Lord, they shall eat, and there will be some left over. And as the Lord said, it came to pass. It was not that Elisha did not see the reality of the need. It was not that Elisha thought 20 loaves of bread would realistically feed 100 people and have some left over. And that way, both Elisha and his servant perceived the reality of the situation. There was simply not enough. The difference was that Elisha had a perspective of divine abundance. That when we invite God into our needs, into what is lacking, into the not enough realities of our lives, God's generosity not only supplies the need, but he always gives an excess, an overflow, in abundance. Today's gospel, Jesus reveals to his people and to each one of us that he is the fulfillment of that divine abundance that we see in the prophet Elisha. We see in Jesus Christ the total outpouring of the heart of God to satisfy the hunger of our hearts. Rather than providing for 100 people with 20 loaves, like the prophet Elisha, Jesus performs an even greater sign of God's generosity. Jesus provides for a multitude of over 5,000 people with a meager five loaves and two fish. Imagine the disciples' thoughts. If you were there with Jesus, what do you think would have crossed your mind in the face of over 500, 5,000 people to feed? We hear Philip respond to paraphrase Thousands of dollars worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. Immediately after, we hear Andrew respond, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Both Jesus and his disciples saw the reality of the vast need among the multitudes of people. The difference was in their knowledge and trust in the generosity of God. Jesus knows that he can provide, that he will provide, and there will be abundance. The good news for you and I is that in our urgent need, in the not enough areas of our lives, Jesus is ready and able to provide more than we can imagine. Today we may find ourselves saying, I don't have enough in the area of health. Health. I feel the struggle of physical, mental, or even spiritual illness. I don't have enough financially or materially to get through this moment in my life or my family's life. Or we might be saying, I don't have enough in the area of relationship. I feel like I'm lacking love. Each of us have come today with different needs, different areas of our lives that it feels like there just isn't enough. 
And maybe you're right about all those needs. Maybe there just isn't enough. The question is, what is the next step? Jesus challenges us today to imitate the pattern of today's gospel passage in faith. Like the boy in the gospel, we are called to place our five loaves and our two fish, those things in our life that we don't think are enough, in the hands of Jesus. If he is the divine word that created the cosmos out of nothing, imagine what he can do even with the little you give him today. Friends, in just a few moments, Jesus will provide what our gospel passage foreshadows, the superabundant bread of the Eucharist, the life-giving bread that nourishes us and fills us with abounding grace. As we confidently say amen to Jesus, really and substantially present in the Eucharist, may we receive the abundance of his divine life trusting that the Lord comes to generously answer all our needs, and then through us, answer the needs of the whole world. Together, let us proudly profess our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Inspired by God's holy word, and trusting that God answers all our needs, we now offer our prayers and petitions. For the church, the body of Christ here on earth, that we may continue to nourish all who hunger or thirst physically or spiritually, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who endure hunger each day, for refugees, the poor, and the homeless, that God will open avenues for food to reach them and help all to work together to help provide for their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are suffering the effects of drought, extreme heat, fires, and flooding, that God may strengthen them, send relief, and inspire us to protect and guard our fragile planet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who bring the bread of life to those who cannot be here with us, may God bless their work and inspire them as they share the love of Christ with our community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, that God will curtail the spread of the virus, heal those with it, and give strength and courage to all who care for the sick. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone to their rest, may the saints and angels welcome them to God's eternal kingdom. We remember especially James Stillman and Gordon Fuller. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us take a few moments to add our own intentions in silence. Through the intercession of Our Lady, we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray with me that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray these offerings, which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, 
almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be back gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Father, have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you, through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of Jesus now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated just for a moment. common question I get these days is, Father John, are you getting a replacement for Father David? So just in case you're talking to Father David, let him know that I said, because he'll want to hear this, that there could be no replacement for Father David. That's what he would want to hear. But the answer to that question is yes and no. As you know, um, there's a deep, deep decline in the number of priestly vocations, but the Holy Spirit never abandons the church so the Holy Spirit inspires men and women lay men and women who love the church and love uh, the study of religion and theology to study in our schools of theology and seminaries and then they come and they work as pastoral associates in parishes so I'm happy to announce that um, we've hired Stephen Serafin as a pastoral associate here at St. Bartholomew's. Stephen will work very closely with me in promoting the mission of our church. So please join me in welcoming Stephen to our parish staff. Thanks, Father John. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, the most important thing to know about me is that I am not a priest. I've actually been married for five years. Uh, my wife's name's Trisha. We just had our first uh, child last July. Uh, she just turned one uh, the same day that Anne uh, hit a big number as well. Uh, but I, uh, I'm so excited to be here. I have actually been attending Mass here for probably about the last two months. Uh, so just in the back, just getting to know the community. 
And it's such a wonderful and beautiful community. I've already felt so welcome uh, coming here. A little bit about me, I uh, have been working for the Archdiocese for the last two years uh, in the catechetical office. Uh, prior to that, I was a pastoral associate at another parish, uh, and so I'm bringing a lot of that experience to St. Bart's. I'm finishing up my doctorate right now. It's a doctorate in ministry, and it's focused on accompanying married couples and families. Uh, so a lot of uh, uh, marital coaching or family coaching and best practices how to uh, strengthen marriages and families. And so I'm hoping to bring that to the table. And when you see Fa Father David, you can let him know I can never replace him. I don't think I can get my hair the, the way that he gets his hair. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I look forward to meeting all of you and uh, getting to know all of you and to be able to share my faith story with you as well. So thank you so much. Thank you, Stephen. You'll learn about this community, something I've said. People will come into this church and say, Father John, you have such a beautiful church. And I'll always say, the building is nice as well, because it's the people here of St. Bartholomew that makes it such a beautiful church, and you'll experience that. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.